Welcome to Maker Mode College Online Tutorial. We hope at the end of this lesson, you will have acquired the expected learning outcome. Sit down and listen attentively as we introduce our subject teacher. I welcome you back to another mathematics uh, class. I still remain myself, Atubaz Abdullahi. And in our previous uh, classes, we've discussed the loss of indices and the part of the loss of indices that we discussed include one multiplication law where we said if you are given a raised to the power of x times a raised to the power of y the result of that is going to be a raised to the power of x plus y and the second loss of indices that we discussed is that if you are given a raised to the power of x divided by a raised to the power of y, the result of that is going to be a raised to the power of x minus y. And we also discussed the third law of indices where we said any non zero value raised to the power of zero, the result of that is going to be one. And the first one we discussed was that if you are given a raised to the power of minus x, it's going to be 1 over a raised to the power of x. That one serves as our reciprocal law. And the fifth one we discussed is that if you are given a raised to the power of x, close bracket, or raised to the power of y, the result of that is going to be a raised to the power of x, y. That one represents our power law. And the next law that we shall look at this minute is the root law. And in this root law, you will agree with me that the if you are given square root of a, this symbol is designated for a short form of square root of a. And this is designated for the cube root of a. It's just a short form of cube root of a. And the root law is telling us that whenever you have a square root of a, the result of that is going to be a raised to the power of 1 over 2. And we don't know how it comes about that. And if you are also given cube root of a, the result of that will be a raised to the power of 1 over 3. And that also represents our root law. We do not know how it comes about this. Uh, 1 over 3 and we shall look at that in our in this uh, lesson in general if you are given x root of a the result of that is going to be a raised to the power of 1 over x that is the summary of this uh, root law and where we have the square root of a to be equals a raised to the power of half, we might decide to replace this half and put any arbitrary value there. It could be, this could be y, this could be n, this could be m, anyone you like. So we do not know what will come up here. That is why we represent it as x. So the square root of a is equals a raised to the power of x. That represents our equation 1. And in your GSS 3, when you are given this and you want to do away with this square root, all you need to do is just to square both sides of this equation. And if we square both sides of equation 1, the result is going to be square of this 
equal root a equals square of this a raised to the power of x and this square will go along with this square root. This square root cannot be together with this square. So they will cancel each other. And from power law, we are going to multiply this x by this two for us to do away with this bracket. So by the time you multiply these two by x, you are going to arrive at two x at the power of this a. So the result from here is going to be a equals two and a raised to the power of two x. This represents our equation two. If you look at this and the previous uh, equation, you will find out that there is a little bit different between the two. And from there, if you look at this one very well, a number written this way, without any indication, in the power of eight is one, and by the time this a here, cancel this a here, the power of this one will be equal to the power of this a. This power of a, which is one, and the power of this a, which is two x, by the time this a cancel this a, we are going to have one equals this two x. And we are looking for the value of this uh, x. So, we are going to divide both sides by two, which represents the coefficient of this uh, x. And by the time you divide both sides by this coefficient of x, we are going to arrive at one over two equals this two x all over two. And this two will cancel this two at the denominator. This one, they will cancel each other. And you are going to be left out with this x. That is how comes about this x equals this one over two. That is, if you are, recall that we denote this x to be any arbitrary value of our choice. And we said from the root law that the square root of any number is equals that number raised to the power of one over two. And from this solution, we prove that our x equals one over two which represent the power of this a previously. And from there, the conclusion is that any time you have the square root of a, is still the same thing as a raised to the power of one over two. To be like to prove the second one, where we have the cube root of a. If you try that one and you are unable to get it, so we are still going to meet in the next class. Okay, we are going for application of root law. And in the application of this root law, we shall take a good look at this examples. Example one, we have nine raised to the power of one over two. The second example, eight raised to the power of one over three. The third one, eight, raised to the power of minus two over three. And the fourth one is 16 all over eight one, all raised to the power of minus three over two. And the solution of the first question there goes thus. We have nine raised to the power of one over two. If you compare this one with the root law where we have Square root of a equals a raised to the power of one over two. This 
our a is equals this nine and this half also equals this half it means that we can transform this one into square root of nine as we did to this one so we are going to have nine raised to the power of one over two equals square root of nine which is equals positive and negative three the reason why we are having this positive and negative three is that anytime you are asked to find the square root of any number you have to look for two similar values that you can multiply together to give you the result of that same number and if you must use negative three and negative three the two of them are similar you multiply the two together it's going to give you positive nine which is the number you take the square root of and the, if you use positive three and positive three you multiply the two together the result is going to be positive nine that is why it is being summarized there as positive and negative three it means that if you use negative negative it serves the purpose and if you use positive, positive, it also serves the purpose. Now, the second example where we have 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3 equals the result of this one has been summarized in this root block where we said if you have the root of x, it's still the same thing as x raised to the power of 1 over 3. And if you compare that with this, it means that this one can be transformed to be cube root of 8. This 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3 can be transformed to be cube root of 8. And cube root of 8 will give us 2. That is to show that we are talking about the 3 possible values that we can multiply together to give us 8 and the value that we can multiply together the two the three similar values that we can multiply together to give us this 8 is 2 and if you multiply 2 by 2 is going to give you 4 by 2 again is going to give us 8 that is how it comes about this 2 one thing you have to note about the solution of this first one and the second one is this. In the first one, the fraction at the power of this 9, the denominator of 8 is even. That is why we have the result to be positive and negative. When the denominator of this fraction is odd, the result is not going to have the positive and negative. The result will be written as two only or any other value. Take note of that. Then the solution of the third question goes thus. The third question is given as eight raised to the power of minus two over three. And you will agree with me from reciprocal law that if you are given this, it's going to be 1 all over this 8 raised to the power of this 2 over 3. If you recall that reciprocal law, you are going to, the result of this one is going to be 1 over 8 raised to the power of 2 over 3. And you are going to separate this 2 over 3 such that two, this two will be separated from one over three, which is the denominator. So if you do that, you are going to have one all over eight, one raised to the power of one over three times two. Because by the time you multiply this two by one here, you are going to have the initial expression that you had here, where you have one over two, one over eight raised to the power of two over three. So, 
If you compare this to the previous example that we saw, then we have 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3. It's talking about the cube root of this 8. And you must do a total separation of these two from this 1 over 3 by bringing it out of this uh, bracket. And if you do that, you are going to have 1 all over 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3 into the bracket of this square. And like I've told you that this one is similar to the previous example that we solved where we have 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3. And it's still the same thing as the cube root of this uh, 8. And cube root of 8 will give us 2. That is how it comes about this 1 all over 2. This square is still, will still remain there. That is how it comes about this square. And if you express this one, you are going to have 2 times 2 in this case. And the result will be 1 over 2 times 2 equals 1 all over. The result of this 2 times 2 will give us 4. This is the final answer to the third example. I believe you are following us. So we shall take a good look at the solution of the first question. And the solution of the fourth question goes thus. The fourth question is given as 16 all over 81, all raised to the power of minus 3 over 2. And if you flash back to reciprocal law, this 16 all over 81 represents our A, and this minus 3 over 2 represents our X. So, we are going to transform this 16 all over 81, all raised to the power of minus 3 over 2, to be 1 all over 16 over 81, all raised to the power of 3 over 2. Remember, this 16 over 81, they are together. It is this one that is inverse of this, that shows the inverse of 16 all over 81. From this, this can be expressed by taking this to multiplication. This 81 will change a position from denominator to become numerator. And this 16 will change from the numerator to become the denominator. And it can be transformed to be 81 all over 16 goes to the power of 3 over 2. And this 3 over 2, we are going to separate them by having 81 all over 16 all raised to the power of 1 over 2 multiplied by 3. Remember, this bracket represents our multiplication sign. And if we should use this 3 to open this, this 1 over 2 to open this bracket, we are going to arrive at 3 over 2 as we rightly had it in, a, in our previous expression. So, this from the root law, we said Anytime you are having a non-zero value raised to the power of half, it's going to give us roots of that non-zero value. So this half raised to the power of half affects both this 81 and 16. This can be expressed as root of 81 all over root of 16 all raised to the power of this 3. And you agree with me that earlier we explained, we've explained that this root of 81, root of any number, we are going to have the positive and negative of whatever 
is going to be its result. So we are going to have the root of 81 to be positive and negative of 9. And root of 16 is going to give us positive and negative of 4. And you agree with me that the results from here is going to be Q of this 9. And the cube of 9 is going to give us 9 times 9 into 3 places. And we are going to have 7 to 9. The cube of this plus 4, we are going to have 4 times 4 times 4. And the result is going to be 64. And we are going to have positive and negative sign being written along with them. So we are going to have positive and negative of 7 to 9 here and positive and negative 64 on that end. Thank you for today. We shall meet in our next lesson.